Hello there guys and welcome back to the FIFA 21 career mode with Manchester United and today we've got episode 10 of the career mode and in today's episode we've got a transfer window coming up and we definitely need to start looking at some places that we need to fill. So just before we go any further then into today's episode, the majority of you guys watching this right now aren't subscribed to the channel and if you end up enjoying today's episode don't forget Go down below, hit the red subscribe button, it's completely free and you can always go back and change your mind. So here we go then, here is the Premier League table to start things off and a poor episode last time out. I've got to say guys, one goal we scored in the whole of the episode. One goal in three games, really poor from us, really, really poor. And you can see we're in fifth place at the moment, we was down in eighth place at one point in that episode. We're in fifth place at the moment on 34 points. Liverpool 11 points ahead of us. So guys, just taking a look at the team then and like I said, we are looking to possibly, possibly bring a striker in in this January transfer window. I'm not too sure as of yet, just because Greenwood last episode won goal in three games and of course I don't expect all goals to come from him. Obviously I want Rashford to be chipping in, Fernandez, Neto, um, Pogba if he can from midfield and of course I don't want to put all that pressure on Greenwood. But especially in that last episode, I expected him to do a lot better. And I think over on this right-hand side, we signed Neto into the team. And obviously at that point, Greenwood was playing on the right. But now Greenwood's up front. I've sort of pushed Neto into the first team. And I just wish his overall would grow just a little bit faster. Because if he was, you know, if he was, you know, what, 79, 80 rated, I could sort of live with that. But being 75 rated... He just lacks a little bit of quality on that right-hand side for us. So, of course, as you guys know, then we do have Joe Felix on the shortlist. Now, we talked a little bit about him in the last episode about, when, you know, if we do sign him, um, is he a much better upgrade then? Mason Greenwood, is he 82 rated? Of course, his potential probably way higher. But, I mean, straight away, in terms of impact, would he be a much bigger, um, you know, player for the team than Mason Greenwood? Just in terms of ability and finishing ability alone, and um, they're both the same, you know, Gal Felix 82 finishing, Mason Greenwood 82 finishing. So again, I just feel like for all that money, would he make a big, an impact, a big enough impact as we want right now, halfway through the season? I did also go and add Anaki Inaki Williams to the shortlist. He can play right wing as well. I've gone ahead and sent a scout report out for both of these, Alexander Isaac and also Williams, and just, you know, get a feeling for what sort of overall both of these players are. But now we do have 189 million in the transfer budget and 400k in the wage budget. But I've got to say, when we started this career mode, I'm more likely what is to go down the route of, you know, are buying younger players that are, you know, young in overall and all that sort of stuff and developing them and then obviously getting a class of 22, class of 21, whatever you want to call it. And then moving on and moving the career mode in that direction. But as it stands right now, the team is lacking so much quality in the front three that, you know, we just really need to start putting this transfer budget to good use. But coming up first then in today's episode, as you guys might have remembered, we are taking on Spurs first in today's episode. Then they're only three points ahead of us. So winning this game is pretty crucial. Obviously, goal difference would separate us, so we still would be in fifth place even if we did beat them. But it would just be nice to be level on points with a team in fourth place. So let's take a look then at the injury list as well. Just while we're here, before we do go into this game against Spurs, and you can see we've got two... Quite big injuries there. Son is still going to be out for up to two months. Bergvine is out as well for two days. So that could help us in this next game coming up. But let's get into the first game then of today's episode. And you can see they're playing Regulon at left mid there. Mora on the right. Obviously Kane up front. Deli Alley just behind him. Um, but yeah, interesting. Colosterman as well. A player they did bring in in the summer transfer window. But for us, we're going with our normal, uh, normal lineup. McTominay is going to start over Van der Beek. Just to try and help that back line just a little bit. Because obviously, of course, you know, Deli Alli, the last time he played Spurs, was in good form. So I can imagine he's still going to be in good form in this game. Sanchez playing at right back. That is interesting there for Spurs. But yeah, let's just hope we get off to a good start. Hopefully score some more goals in today's episode. And let's just try and get Greenwood some goals. Because, of course, if Greenwood, Greenwood can start banging them in for us, and we're going to feel confident with him up front, there's no need to go out and spend loads of money on a striker. You know what I mean? I do want Greenwood leading the line for us. Future on down the line in this career mode. Oh, what have I done, guys? What have I done? No way. The oh, the kits. Look at the kits. It's not as bad as... Oh, obviously, you guys watching this will think, oh, what's so wrong with that? Like, I've looked back on videos and it actually doesn't look as bad. But when you're actually playing it and you're playing it in the pace and everything, oh, how have I not noticed that going into the game? Oh, I'm so tempted to... Oh, I'm so tempted to just maybe not quick sim it, but simulate it. And jump in if we have to. I really am tempted right now. You know, I'm not looking forward to this. Uh, let's just see how we start off. And here we go. Go on. I wanted that to Greenwood. Why is that not going to Greenwood? 
Okay, go on, Fernandez. Pogba, go on, finish that. And it's in. There we go. Six minutes in. Pogba, that is great. We got one that up here against Spurs. And Pogba with the goal. And maybe we should start playing like this more often. With the kits being the same. No, I absolutely hate it. I absolutely hate it. But there we go. One that up in this game. That's a great ball roll from Fernandez. Gets the pass off. Was it a Fernandez with a ball roll? I think it was. And it was. There we go. And Pogba finishes that one off. The slide tackle coming in as well. But Pogba, that's his first goal in the league. Definitely need to get in more goals this season. Oh, Harry Kane trying to play the ball through to Deli Alley. Just trying to get this cleared here. And I don't really know who I'm passing it to. I mean, going to be honest, just got to try and play this fast and get forward. Here we go, Fernandez up towards, okay, Pogba. Not going to get to him in the end, though. And here we go, got it back with Rashford, though. Here we go inside, Fernandez. Maybe Neto. Uh, okay, a little bit of a risky pass. Didn't even know Rashford was there. Um, here we go, Greenwood lays off Fernandez. Just can't get there in time to get the shot away. Oh, here we go, Pogba pushing forward. Rashford should be out wide right now at the moment, but he's not. Pogba gets cleared out of the way, no problem. But let's have a see what Spurs can do now. On the counter-attack, Holberg playing it out wide to Lucas, Sanchez now. Interesting from Spurs, play Sanchez, oh go on Rashford, go on. Let's try and make the most of this, come on, maybe a low crossover, try and find Neto. And okay, keep it in, kept it in, the pass, there we go inside, just keep it, tell us, look, chip over. Oh no, he gets taken down, and just a wasted chance in the end. Oh, here we go, here we go, Harry Kane, no way, no way, Harry Kane, Dele Alli, he's got to be offside. Surely, please be offside. And he's not offside, guys. I brung De Gea out on purpose because I thought Harry Kane was offside. And I shouldn't have even brought him out anyway. Why does it matter if he's offside? The rule will just get, it will just get played out. But I thought he was offside there. And I thought, you know, Maguire's closing. De Gea's closing. Surely that pass isn't going to get through. And it does get through to Deli Alli. And there you go. 1-1 one, one in this game. You know, and a really good start from us. Deli Alli, eight goals this season as well. So far, but you know, a great start from us, and it just goes straight down the drain. Oh, there we go. Go on, Fernandez. There we go. 2 1. 48 minutes in, and Fernandez with the rebound off his own first chance. And yeah, I did not expect this whatsoever, guys. I really didn't. Lucas Mora fouled us, and we actually got a free kick further up the pitch, but managed to make something from it. And we're back in front in this game against Spurs. And you can see here Pogba just tries to go over the top. Doesn't. Greenwood with the header. Fernandez with the volley. But then luckily on the rebound there. And we're back in front. Fernandez now with five goals this season. And we've definitely got to stay in front now. Trying to stop this attack here from Spurs. Harry Kane with the pass. Harry Maguire is going to pass it away. But it ends up with Spurs play once again. Like I said, I'm surprised they're winning this game with the kits. Obviously clashing. But... It is quite difficult when you're trying to get the ball out from the defence. You're just trying to get a quick ball away. And as you just seen there, Harry Maguire just passes it straight into the path of two Spurs players. But Spurs not really doing anything with this at the moment. Just trying to get it back off them. And it's proving quite difficult here. Well, Masaka couldn't get that. Deli Alli now, okay, again, just ends up with a Spurs player. We just can't seem to, if we do get it, or we do get a touch to it, Lucas Moura, no way, and it's in. And it's in, 2-2 two -two in this game, Lucas Moura, and yeah, 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 yeah. We just can't seem to just get the ball back from them. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I feel like if I press circle, I'm going to give away a foul, so I don't dare try and put a foot in. But here, like I say, what's McTominay doing running round him? He should be running at him. And Lucas Moura there scores. Fair enough. Bogba's going to go off. Van der Beek's going to come on. Come on, we've been in front twice in this game. Surely we can do it just one last time. Oh, here we go, Spurs getting forward once again here. Bale, no way, no. And thank God, just get it, just get it and get it bloody cleared. What is going on? Oh my God, yeah, this is what I'm saying about the clash of the kits. Come on, back line's just stood there. Back line, he's just stood there, no way. Hoiberg puts it in the back of the net. Spurs, 3-2, and yeah, it's gone from bad to worse. It's gone from bad to worse. I hate this. Why did I not check the colour of the kits before you get into it? And if you notice, though, that if you just skip it back a couple of seconds there, as soon as Bale gets the ball, all the back line just stand there. None of them move. And I have to physically go over, control them, and get them to move and go with Bale. And it just allows them to get so close to the goalkeeper. Oh, either way, Spurs in front right now. And there we have it in, guys. The full-time whistle goes in this game against Spurs. And you get the 3-2 win. I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. A game where... Oh, I'm sick of keep saying it. A game where we could have won. You know, we go 1-0 up. Then, you know, make it 1-1. One, one. Then we go 2-1 up. Then it's 2-2. Two, two, and then 3-2 in the end to Spurs. I can't believe it. But definitely in the future, I've got to start checking these kits. You know, because that was absolutely painful to play. 
So again guys, another poor start to an episode, another defeat for us, and just look at our record there, 9 wins, 7 draws, 4 losses, it just isn't good enough, it really isn't good enough, too many draws, too many losses, and we're now sitting still on, well yeah, still on 34 points, Spurs now go 6 points ahead of us. So Real Madrid then did come back after we put that counter offer back in, and they're not willing to pay 75, they're willing to pay 67.5 for him. And I'm going to be honest, I'm just going to go ahead and accept this offer. You know, get Martial shipped out to Real Madrid. And let's just get ourselves a striker in, in this January transfer window. So we do have the scout reports then that have returned for Alexander Isaac and also Williams. And just taking a look at them right now. I've got to be honest, none of them really catch my eye. And none of them I'm not that impressed by. I've got to be honest, Williams doesn't look too bad. Um, he comes with five traits. You can see there, weak foot lets him down a little bit. But the fact he can play right wing does help. Um, six foot one as well, 94 sprint speed, which definitely would help us. 88 jumping, um, allows us obviously to get some crosses into the box. 79 finishing, obviously a little bit low, uh, but could work with it. 85 at shot power, and then Isaac again, a um, little bit different of a player, but again, out of these two, none of them really catch my eye and are much of an upgrade on Mason Greenwood. So here is then how we're gonna line up for the second time in today's episode. We're taking on Burnley, guys, a team. As you guys know, last time out, they beat us 3-0 and the team I just hate playing. And I'm sure many of you guys hate playing them as well. They're lacking a few fitness issues at the moment. We are at the back, um, but I'm hoping going forward, I've changed the front three this time. and go with Greenwood on the right, Rashford through the middle, and then Dan James on the left. Just trying to see if we can get anything from this game. A win, desperately needed, desperately needed. You know, we're in fifth place at the moment, guys. We should easily be in that top four after the amount of games we've thrown away this season. So... Let's just hope now, with this front three, we can get a win just before we do go into the January transfer window. Oh, no way. Burnley, Barnes, 1-0. 1-0 to Burnley. Six minutes in. And, oh, guys, guys, I'm just not having fun at the minute. I'm not having fun at the minute. I'm going to be honest, I'm not having fun. Look at this. What could I do? What could I do there? And let, is, there, is he going to show another replay? So was I pressuring him with Van der Beek? And if I was pressuring him with Van der Beek, why is Maguire so far out of position when that pass gets played? I'm just looking back at that there. If I was using Van der Beek to try and close the ball down, why is Maguire so far out of position by the time that pass is played? I'll never know. And here we go, Rashford now. Might just try and take it alone. Rashford, go on. The shots. Okay, no need for the roulette, if I'm going to be honest. It was just pointless from me. But here we go, Burnley now on the counter-attack. Tellez having to get back, do a bit of defending. And I don't know why, but this back line is so, like, um, what's the word? So um, out of fitness, whatever. You know, <laughs> stamina is really low after every game with this back line. But there we go, great pass inside. Fernandez turns, and he's in. There we go, 22 minutes in. That's a great bit of play from us. And Bruno Fernandez scores and gets us level in this game. And I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get us forward and get chances created for us. And a chance like that is great. Dan James does brilliantly well. Ball rolls it. Plays the pass inside. Fernandez again. Just a 180. Straight past Nick Pope. No chance of him saving that one. Fernandez now six goals. Let's just keep the pressure up. Let's just keep the pressure up. And I really want to smash Burnley here after what they did to us last time. Oh, here we go. Pogba now. Pogba. Uh, the pass inside. Rashford down to Fernandez. Maybe back to Rashford. Go on. 2-1. Then it's 2-1. There we go. 32 minutes in. Rashford scores. And we're in front in this game against Burnley. Finally, a game where we scored two goals and we're in front. Well, I say scored two goals. Obviously, we scored. Well, this was the same result we had in the Spurs game. But they obviously scored two and made it 3-2 in the end. So, I don't know what I'm on about. But, again, we feel like we're dominating now a little bit. Two goals quite fast as well. Rashford doing great up front for us so far. Run the beat. The pass to Rashford. The touch. The finish. Okay, it's not going to be on. And another corner here, what probably the last chance here before half time. Just try and get it in there, and uh, there we go, Maguire. Come on, Maguire, the header. Oh my days! I don't even know if that was on target, to be honest. But okay, Maguire's down. No way, Maguire is down, guys. He's looking serious. Come on, just try and get something from this. Fernandez has still got it. The pass down once again. The poor pass. That was poor. But Maguire was down for quite a little while there. Let's just take a look, and okay, he's not been he's not been took off, so I can't imagine it's going to be a bad injury, with the fact he's still on the pitch here. But I'm, I am thinking to take him off because I cannot risk him getting injured. Let's get Lindelof on for this second half. There we go, Dan James, ball through, Rashford just not going to get there before the goalkeeper. We're definitely pushing in this game, trying to get that third goal because, like I said, we've all seen what happened in that last game against 
Spurs maybe have to push and get the fourth goal if, if, if last game is anything to go by. But here we go, Rashford now, a few options through, trying to find Fernandez, can find him finally. Van der Beek now maybe with a chance. Nick Pope, another save in this game, comes another corner. Burnley going to make a change here, come on, inside, inside with Fernandez. Pogba reaching for the header, not going to get there. Tellez, okay, here we go, maybe a chance. Go on, Pogba, go on, go on, Rashford, go on. the. Go on. Okay, again, again, nothing comes from it, but we get ourselves a corner. Fernandez whips it in, in towards Pogba, the header's on, but he goes wide in the end. No, 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 Burnley are in. Oh, thank God, De Gea's finally saved something. Can you believe it, guys? De Gea, I think De Gea, if you actually go back and look at the episodes, majority of the shots he, um, uh, sorry, I can't get my words out. The majority of shots he has faced, I think probably 9 out of 10, at least 8 out of 10, he's let in. And it's quite worrying, if I'm going to be honest. Okay, we're still not got the win yet, guys. Let's just concentrate here. Cork trying to get through. Can we just get a touch on this? Just get it cleared. That'd be nice. There we go. Come on. Go on, Lindelof. Go on. There we go. The pass forward now. Come on. Neto is on now for Greenwood. Trying to play a ball through. Fernandez. That's it. Just a back pass to Rashford in the end. Just not got to him. But yeah, let's see. 15 minutes left. Well, less than 15 minutes left. Can Burnley get themselves an equaliser? I definitely hope not. And there we go. Lindelof to clear it once again. There we go. Goal kick. Rashford. Go on, Rashford. Keep going. Oh, I just couldn't get there. The goal kick all the way over to Nick Pope, but not long left in this game. Let's just see it out. And, okay, okay, a little bit of a risky header there. Offside in the end. 89 minutes now. Let's just let's just keep it up there under the pitch, guys. Come on. What's that? Three minutes added on. That's not great for us. Um, let's have a see here. Played forward. wan -Bissaka. Can we get a cross in here, maybe? wan -Bissaka whips it over, trying to get it in towards Rashford. Didn't in the end. Van der Beek. The pass. Oh, what? Go on, McTominay. Oh, okay. Okay, win the header. And we don't have to win the header. We get the win against Burnley at Old Trafford. Fair enough, we didn't get as many goals as I would like to. We've got to win. We've got to win finally. And again, I'm not proud of it. When I say I'm not proud of it, I mean like it's took us to play Burnley to get a win. And it's not great. Um, but it'll do great for us. Hopefully we can kick on from here. Maybe try and get a little bit of form going. But, uh, but yeah, great win, no, nonetheless. So we've got quite a few emails then to look through here then. One about wan and Man City. Let's delete that straight away. Traore does leave now on loan. He's got out on a two-year loan deal. Hopefully he does get a lot of game time. Matic does go as well. He has already agreed to join Wolves. Um, two monthly scouting reports we'll take a look at. Colombia, uh, player loan expired. Okay, he goes back. Okay, not too bad. Training injury. wan is going to be out for up to 10 days. Okay, that's not great. But obviously you've got Williams who can play there. And again, a scout report. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scout report here. Anyone? Uh, he doesn't look too bad, actually. They will sign him. But again, age 14. Um, it's, not, it's just not great. Age 14. I need players that are ready to go out on loan, ideally. No one of any sort of interest there in the Scotland one. Let's take a look here. Quite a lot of players here. Let's just go down them. Um, anyone with decent potential? Um, no. By the looks of it, no one. There's absolutely no one. This guy doesn't look too bad. 61 to 87. But again, age 15, it's not great. Let's just sign him up. But Youth Academy, I've got to be saying, has been really poor for us so far. So then, guys, we are going to go ahead and sign a player in today's episode. Of course we are. The transfer window is open. And we desperately need to improve this team as soon as possible. If not improve it right now, definitely improve it for the future. So I've gone ahead and also added some players to the shortlist. I just want to quickly show you guys. Now, of course, you know, we've got Felix on here as well already. Isaac Williams on here. But I've gone ahead and added Richarlison. And also Calvert-Lewin to the shortlist. Now, just just think, just listen to me here, guys. So, I'm just thinking right now, obviously, I was thinking, do we get a striker in? Do we get a right winger in? Or do we try and get a left winger in and play Rashford at striker? I'm not too sure what to do. I'm going to be honest. I, I could play Rashford at striker, but it means getting a new left winger in. Or just continue to play Dan James there. Or play Greenwood at striker and then play Rashford on the left. But we need another right winger in. All that sort of stuff. And now, just take a look through these players here I've just added. Kelvin Lewin can only play striker. Rashford, uh, not Rashford, sorry. Richarlison can play striker, left wing, and right mid. Williams can play striker and right wing. Isaac, just striker. And Felix, just centre forward and striker. So I think the ideal player for us moving forward and does sort of fit with the realism of the career mode is Richarlison. You can play striker if you want to play Rashford on the left and Greenwood on the right. Or you can play left wing if you want to play right, uh, Rashford at striker, Greenwood on the right, so on and so forth. So. Richarlison sort of adds to the versatility in the team, doesn't he? Because at one game, you know, Richarlison isn't really banging him in up for us up front. We've put him out on the left, put Rashford up front. 
put him out on the right, put Greenwood up front. You know, all them sort of things. It allows us to still get Greenwood game time, Dan James game time, Rashford game time, and also Pedro Neto game time as well. So I'm going to leave it to you guys for the next episode. Should we go ahead and sign Richarlison? I do think he would be a good sign-in. Obviously, I would like to try and get Calvert-Lewin, but like I say, if I sign him, I just have to play him at striker. I can't play him anywhere else. Whereas Richarlison, he's got good finishing, good sprint speed, good all-round stats, uh, stats to play as strikers, play as a winger as well. So I think he is definitely someone we should look at for the team. But anyway, moving on for today's episode, we're going to go ahead and try and sign Kunde because obviously we do want him into the side. I want to try and offer Lindelof in this deal as well because... He will be taking Lindelof's place in the team. Kunde will be going to the bench and obviously getting on and hopefully replacing Maguire one day in this team. And obviously we've got Tuanzebi in the reserves at the moment as well. So let's go ahead and get into this deal with Gilles Kunde. So I'm just going in then with a the first off here. Lindelof, who's worth 22 million plus 17.5 million. Trying to get Gilles Kunde, like I say, 79 rated. Fair enough, he's two overalls lower than Lindelof. Well, he can definitely grow a lot, can't he? And, okay, he's, he's, he's comfortable with that. Fair enough, let's take that straight away. And I'm just surprised that he's comfortable with Lindelof being involved in the deal. Only because a lot of the time when I try and involve a player in a deal, most of the time they go, we don't want the player, we just want loads of money up front. And the fact they're going to take Lindelof off our hands and we get Kunde in and he wants a rotation squad roll straight away. I'll take this, guys. This is very good news for us. And the fact that, you know, Kunde will be happy to sit on the bench for us. Let's try and get him on a four-year deal. I'm guessing he might want a three, but a four-year deal. Okay, yeah, he'll accept that. Uh, no release clause. And he's even going to put a wage up front for us. That is great. This is great, guys. Let's just count it out. Remove the bonus. Edit the wage. Just up that a little bit, a little bit to 92.5, maybe. Uh, and submit that offer. But, you know, this is great. Great business for us. I've got to be honest. Really great business. And it's not quite what he was looking for, but he is keen to join the club and he's going to join. And there we go. How quick was that? Jules Kunde has joined Manchester United. And there we have it then, guys. Jules Kunde is in the squad. And what a signing that was. I've got to be honest, I didn't really plan on making it till the next season. But I've just been seeing how much Lindelof has been getting game time as of recent. And he's been getting quite a bit of game time. Obviously, this back two partnership here is pretty decent, I want to say. Uh, but in terms of fitness levels, it's not great. It really isn't. And like I say, in the future, I do want Jules Kunde and Torres to be our uh, centre-back partnership. Of course I do. But as it stands right now, Maguire is in the first 11. But like I say, with how much game time Lindelof has been getting, I think even if Kunde does sit on the bench for the rest of the season, he'll still get plenty of game time. So guys, be sure to let me know down below in the comment section then, who do we go for? Isaac Williams of Charleston. Or Calvert Lewin, or if you have anyone else in mind, let me know down below in the comment section. Like I say, I'm, I'm a little bit um, edging more towards Richarlison just because he can play across that whole front three. Comes with three traits already: five star weak foot, four star skill moves. You know, you know what you're getting with this player. Whereas Williams, I never used him before. Obviously, again, does look like a great player. Can play in the right wing. No reason why he can't play in the left wing. But Richarlison already played in the Prem. Obviously, wanting to play Champions League football, and we can offer him that. And I really do think him up front with the likes of Richarlison, not Richarlison, sorry, Rashford on the left, Neto or Greenwood on the right, could be really good for us. So let me know down below in the comment section. Also, guys, I'm interested to know what development plan will increase Jules Kunde's overall the fastest because I'm not having the best of luck at the moment with growing players in this career mode. Fair enough for only, what, half the season in? But I did, I did expect, you know, certain players to be a higher overall. So in terms of Kunde, is it best to put him on a growth development plan? Or is it best to go ahead and put him on at something like CDM? Um, so I do think even if I transform him to a, transform him to a CDM, um, that his overall obviously will go up and he'll still be able to play centre-back no problem. But the only problem I do have with that is that he doesn't really train too many defensive stats, interceptions and maybe reactions. That's about it if I'm going to be honest. So let me know down below. For now, I'm going to put him on ball playing defender. And just wait to see what you guys say down below. So I'm just going ahead then and removing some of these players from the Youth Academy here. You can see Jacob Thompson. I'm sure he had a higher potential than that. He's gone down now to 71 to 79. So let's release him from the Academy. And like I say, I'm just wanting to try and get some of these players out on loan as soon as possible. I really am. And the only two or three at the moment is probably Chambers and Finch, who I think could go out on loan right now, if I'm going to be honest. Let's promote him and list him out for loan. And then possibly this guy here. But again, his potential has gone down. Let's release him. And we've got a definitely a much thinner youth academy right now. But let's go ahead and try and get David Finch out on loan. Hugo Chambers now 19 years of age. 
He's pushing it. He really is pushing it. He's just start increasing that overall. Uh, but anyway, let's go over and get David Finch loan listed. Because I think 61 overall, he could definitely get game time out on loan. So let's go down here now, David Finch. Add him to the loan list. And development plan, what have I got him on? And I've got him on a centre-back one. And that's going to be finished in 14 weeks. So uh, let's see what happens first. Either he goes out on loan or obviously we get him changed in the development plan so don't forget to join us then in the next episode where we do have the third round of the fa cup the first round that we are playing and we've got crystal palace to start things off in this and now did we play crystal pa yeah we did actually didn't we We played crystal palace in the carabao cup didn't we someone will have to let me know down below in the comment section did we play crystal palace for the first round we might have been the first round of the carabao cup but the first game we played in the carabao cup i'm pretty certain it might have been um, but either way, um, that's who we play and that is going to be in the next episode. So again, we're going to try and play a little bit of a weaker side, try and get Dean Henderson into the squad as well. But we are still going to want to play quite a few players in that that are in the first 11 just to make sure we get through into the next round. But there we go then guys, that's going to be it for today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and if you have, don't forget to leave a like down below on the video. Hit the subscribe button if you are new and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.